All right. So we have a, I don't know what this is. It's like a portion of an, of a conversation with Pearl and some dude. He's just a conservative simp and he excuses everything women do based. Let's listen. Do you think that women should be obedient to their husbands? Yeah. I think that, I think that they should be obedient to their husbands when their husbands give them a rational request or directive. But I think that husbands and wives should lead each other uh, to Christ and to the goodness of their family. So what do you define as rational? Uh, in accord with reason. So something that does, doesn't go against what reason would dictate. So it's good. An example. Of so like I'm, I'm assuming of, crimes. Of like, something that's like, rational or irrational. Yeah, irrational. Yeah, if a, if a husband says... Like obviously that, no crimes, right? Yeah, or if a husband says, you know, I want you to um, lose a, a massive amount of weight, for example, that would put someone's... If her husband wants you to do something to change your body that would put your health at risk, I would say that's irrational. Okay, but a normal amount of weight would be fine. I would right? say I, I would say I think it's fine for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy. But it's very quickly that if a husband or a wife asks for a person to be of a certain weight, that can easily be more of a, out of a desire for vanity than for the other person's well being. What about health? What about health? I think yeah. it's I think it's good for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy. No, My, but I'm asking the husband. Why do you always bring it back to the husband? Because I'm asking about the wife. I didn't ask you about the husband. Because I'm saying I'm saying for the husband, is he can he ask that his wife stays a certain weight? Is that rational? It's rational for him to ask her to be healthy, but staying at a certain uh, weight your entire life. That's not necessarily going to be healthy. Like saying, oh, I what? want you to always be 120 pounds. Like, hey, I got pregnant. Oh, you're kind of getting past that now. I don't like that. That's that would be irrational. That what? What? Cool. OK, that argument's already shit. First of all, your wife's going to gain weight when she's carrying your baby. That's fine. The conversation in the real world, not this stupid hypothetical, would be lose the weight after you give birth to the baby, which plenty of women do all the time. That would so that would he would not be allowed to do that under your I your thought? I think it would be insane if a man said that his wife needs to stay Why? a certain <laughs> Why? <laughs> to, to Why? Say... Like what's wrong with men having standards? What's wrong with that? But Pearl, you do realize that that's absolutely like literally there was a joke in the office mm -hmm. where BJ Novak says some supermodels lose weight when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. That shows that he's just an insane chauvinistic person to demand that a wife stay Why? at a certain weight even though as you get older you naturally gain weight and especially when you get pregnant you gain at least nine pounds of weight mm -hmm. that would be insane to demand well, that someone stay it? at a certain weight. women lose it all the time i fail to see how any of this is relevant <laughs> to no, marriage no, by the way well, I, i'm what i'm trying to understand is your uh first of all if your partner starts to gain too much weight and you don't say nothing or have any boundaries and you're not attracted to them anymore your marriage suffers and eventually a divorce could happen or you may step out the marriage and seek intimacy somewhere else because your partner is not attractive to you anymore if you were to let yourself go as a man do you think your woman would stick around long enough for you to lose the weight if she told you lose the weight and you don't listen and don't lose the weight do you think she's going to want to sleep with you every night or feel disgusted that you even touch her and then your relationship your marriage excuse me will fail what are you talking about your mindset mm -hmm. so so why why can't men have standards in marriage because if you're saying that men can't have standards in their own marriage like this, this I is, this is the, well, you're, that. you're saying it's irrational for a guy to demand his wife stay a certain weight. Why? Be, why is that to wrong? To stay a certain weight his, why? The, during their entire marriage. Why? Why is that wrong? Because by, I, I've seen women do it. Would you like me to answer the question? Go ahead. Okay. Because biologically we, our bodies change over time. They'll naturally gain and lose weight in different circumstances. And your worth as a spouse, mm -hmm. whether you are a husband. The only circumstance it's fine to change your body weight dramatically is pregnancy or if an illness hit you and you had to get on some medication or something happened that you gained weight. That's out of your control. In the normal conversation that we have when we're in a relationship, it's just maintain your weight. Don't go putting on too much weight. Don't go changing on me just for whatever reason because you let yourself go. That's unattractive husband or a wife is not derived by your weight that's just a shallow thing now i think that both husbands and wives should encourage the other to, to should, should encourage it's your job to be attractive i think husbands and it's wives should both maintain attractiveness <laughs> right, but why do you always like why do you always have to bring it back because right why do you now, why do right you now, only focus right now, on women right now because we're asking about the deal for men yeah. so i'm looking at this from the man's point of view what does the man get out of it he is get, this a good deal? He, gets, he can't he even get, ask, he gets he a woman, ask for an in shape wife. He gets a woman who can't even say. Can I answer the question? Pounds? Can I? Can I? Can I answer the question? I'm asking. Yeah, I'm he, asking. he gets a woman who's promised to stay with him, even though statistically he'll gain thirty or forty pounds. And 
And, and that, does, that, does she have, that, does she have the right? Women, women's job has far more of a job to be beautiful than men. You know, men's job is to protect and provide. So do women, do women like, have what, a right what to... What is wrong with a man asking that she says a certain weight? Because it's, it's shallow. It's fine to ask someone to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And it's fine to encourage your spouse to maintain attractiveness, not to just let yourself go. Mm-hmm. But that's the same for husbands and wives. Neither mm-hmm. should just let themselves go. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, not... each one should... Each one should be merciful knowing that and time and age come for all of us. The reason that the obesity, I've looked that up before, the reason that oh, the men are more overweight than, than women mm. is because you include it, you don't look at visceral fat. So like when men are a high, very high like muscle percentage, they're still considered overweight more so than women. So a more accurate way to look at that is visceral fat. And women have higher rates of visceral fat than men. So actually Mm. women are more. And if you look at extreme obesity, women are more obese. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know why you're like kind of lying with that stat, trying to act like men are equally obese. They're not. Well, men are men are still overweight, but that still doesn't that still doesn't show. None of that shows marriage is a bad deal for men. Should men marry women that have. Wow. So his take is marriage is not a bad deal for men. I haven't seen this whole conversation, just snippets of it. I don't know if she's going to mention the laws. I don't know if she's going to mention child custody laws a- apart from alimony and divorce court. If she's going to mention what happens post-divorce to a man's mental health. I don't know if she mentions the fact that the state's got your balls in a vice grip. You can't even demand anything in a no-fault divorce. You can walk home with your wife getting trained by the pool boy and the assistant. And there's nothing you can do. She could still take all your assets. No fault. I've had abortions. Uh-huh. Should men marry women yes that have no. had abortions? Have, should men marry women that have had abortions? I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker. What? Should men marry women with STDs? I wouldn't say. Here, a quarter let me, of I, women have herpes. Should men marry them? I'm going to answer. Okay, go your, ahead. I would like to answer your question. Just, I would say, just as it is not a disqualifier for if a man facilitate an abortion, and ninety percent of what, dude? It's a simple question. You're supposed to be a Christian, right? Is he? He's a Christian. He's a conservative, a trad con, right? Or trad cons. Would you get with a woman that had an abortion? The answer is no. That's murder for the trad con. Yeah. Like you're a murderer. We can't be together. Am I missing something from the conversation? What has happened in the general culture day? Because liberals aren't even liberal anymore. They've turned tyrannical. Like what it means. It seems to me like what liberals are today and what trad cons or conservatives are today is so far from the real thing and they know they're fakes and posers and grifters that they try to signal to each other puritanical values of each ideology and signaling to their own base with things like look how virtuous i am look at how pure my conservative or liberal values are and they've become so radicalized that essentially on the liberal side you they stopped being for personal freedoms for free of government control for individual rights for all the things that a liberal used to stand for, and they become instead tyrannical. And then on the conservative side, instead of being truly religious, truly conservative and valued, they become some amalgamation of some degenerate that is far from the ideals of the book that they're esp- espousing. It's isn't it nuts? Like a conservative today indulges in the things that conservatives in the past would find absolutely disgusting. You would marry a woman that had an abortion. What else? How, how much so for every woman. Who chooses to get an abortion? Ninety mm-hmm. percent of the time, mm-hmm. the man is actively or passively supporting it. So just as it's not I'm a deal breaker for a woman, I'm asking for the future man. I'm not saying this that he asked her to abort his. This is another man's kid. She's had an abortion. No, what I'm saying is I'm applying an equal standard here. Mm-hmm. So I would say that it is not a deal wow. breaker for a man to marry a woman who's had an abortion. Just like it's not a deal breaker. That's why I say to you guys, try not to identify with any group. Every single group is being tainted today in the mainstream by grifters, morons, uh, I, you name it, dude. I don't even know what to call it anymore. This hijacking of every single ideology alive or when things go mainstream, they turn to shit. I don't know. What, that's not a real conservative. That's not when when you tell me conservative, I see conservatives here where I am in Romania, people actively praying when they pass by a church, people attending church every Sunday. If you ask them what abor- abortion is to them, conservatives, they would tell you to religious people, they would tell you it's murder. It's not okay. They don't support it. If you ask a conservative man, would you ever date a woman that has aborted a child? The answer would be no, because of their conservative values. This is insane. For a woman to marry a man who had facilitated an abortion. Should men marry women that have slept with over 10 men? 
Should they marry someone who's slept mm-hmm. with over 10 men? Mm-hmm. I would say that when you have more sexual partners, that's definitely a that's something that's concerning. That could be a red flag. So you would but say that, no? But that doesn't apply. I'm not going to say that someone is unmarriageable because of one particular trait. What about porn? Okay. What, what, what about, about porn? women that have that have participated Come in porn? Come on, man. And marry women that have participated in porn. I would say that that's definitely a red flag, but it is not a necessarily. It's not a deal do breaker. You have a son? Oh hell no! <laughs> what, dude? This is a conservative. Do you see? Do you see? Wow. Okay. The abortion angle is religious. Fine. Some religious people may not feel the same about it because of modern technology. All right, I can see where we can sit on the fence there and discuss that. Fine. Uh, The body count thing, everybody's ideal is lower, but women lie all the time and you may never know. So that one's irrelevant. There's plenty of dudes in happy marriages or horrendous marriages. There are women lied about their body count. You'll never know unless a woman wants you to. Fine. Whatever. That one's a wash. Uh, your woman doing adult entertainment and being recorded on video doing this stuff publicly to the world. You can Google your girl, your wife, and she's on there taking meat sticks, straight hammers for money. Mind you, again, you're not some cuck destiny. You're not some cuck Adam. All these cuck degenerates that indulge in these open relationships. You are a man of God with religious conviction. Uh, what? This is what conservatives are today? Do you see what I mean? Can I ask the questions? Because you can keep asking questions and I'll never answer because them. Because I just, I, it just would be easier if I got a yes or no. Because you keep giving me these roundabout wow. and I'm just at yes no, or I'm no. No, I'm giving you good answers. Wow. <laughs> go ahead, okay, go ahead. so I'd like to finish go about ahead, pornography. Go ahead. go ahead. I would say it's not a deal breaker if a woman had participated in pornography. Uh, much the same way it is not a deal breaker. Well, it's something to be very, very worried about. So I'll answer it this way. I, it's very hard for me to find anything that's a deal breaker for marriage except for maybe diagnosed uh, severe mental illness, for example, um, or addiction to drugs, things like that. But that would apply to men and women. So when it comes to pornography, I would say it's very concerning if you have a, if a woman had previously engaged in pornography, just like it is very concerning if a woman chooses to marry a man who's previously viewed pornography. But this is my question. What, dude? You're equating a dude watching porn to actually being active in the scene. Are you serious? What? What, bro? Christians, please. I'm seeing more and more of these guys popping up. I'm seeing more and more of Christians accepting found God. She found Jesus. She's been baptized. She's a renewed born again virgin after getting pumped 300 different scenes, making millions of dollars. And now she can live the nice Christian saved life. And everybody's on board like, yes, Jesus saved another one. Haha, <laughs> one less going to hell. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally I've read those comments under chicks that literally said, I love using men. I love taking them for everything you got. I love these guys that are so alone and they're just looking for any bit of attention. I just manipulate them, take every dollar they have. I've even took a man's life savings. I did it all the time and I loved it. I felt strong because men are disgusting. (gasps) Whoops. After she makes millions, I found Jesus. I feel saved. I can't believe I've done all the things in my past. When they come home to their mansion, bro, in their Ferrari, and they're just counting the stacks. It's so nice to say you're saved after all that, huh? When you're sitting by sipping Mai Tais in your million dollar house, in your infinity pool. It's cool, bro. Now it's tight to rep Jesus, right? Wow. It's like, why can't men have standards? And and this is what I've noticed from the track community and like the conservatives. It's like the quality of women keeps going down and down and down. I, I, and I'm, we can't even definitively say, hey, maybe we shouldn't marry porn stars. Maybe we shouldn't marry overweight women. You know, it's like we 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 constantly get rid of standards for men. No, I find and, standards as and, long and as... And we can't even... No, no, you're not because you're not even definitively saying you shouldn't marry a porn star. You would never in a million years tell your son to ma- to marry a porn star. An active, currently working porn <laughs> no, star. Even a no, previous you said porn you said star. former. E- even former, you you would never Are come you on. Kidding? Someone you love, okay. and this is this is why. Can this I ask, is why you can keep talking, or you can ask is, me a question. Because I was going to say I do believe in standards, Pearl. I mm-hmm. just believe they should be applied equally. So if mm-hmm. women have a past in porn and that makes them unmarriageable, mm-hmm. fine. Then we should just say any man who's looked at porn don't marry him. No, the, either. the equal. The equal. Is it okay equi- for men equal, to look at porn? You can ask that during your cross sure. The equal equivalent would be a man that's participated in porn that that would be the equal equivalent for if you're really going to go apples to apples here but what i'm asking is okay and quarter, there's lots of men who participate a quarter, in porn a quarter that way. you know a, qu- a quarter of women uh, up to a third have an std should men marry them should they marry them 
Yeah. Just this, the same reasons would apply if you ask women, should they marry men who have STDs? Oh. Men, men have lots. Well, the whole conversation, right, is underpinned on what's the deal? How is marriage good for men these days? Why does this guy keep saying, yeah, but so women shouldn't have these guys? The point is, why should a guy get married today? Why should a guy get married today? Your woman can be fat. Your woman can do adult entertainment. Your woman can have abortions up the wazoo. You're a conservative, a trad con. You're arguing for the benefits of marriage for men. You're telling men, just accept any woman, period. How are you going to bring young men into your camp when that's your messaging? What? Lots of STDs. What's, and if it's okay to marry but why, them. But why is it what about the men? It's like the Because men and women thing. are equal. Men and it's women are equal. And we should treat thing. them equally. It's the crazy. I don't think men and women are equal. Are they equal no. in value and dignity? No. Sorry, I, just, just I, real I'm quick. Just real quick. A, Trent, sorry. you can ask questions in your cross examination. Sure. Yeah. That's I'm fine. Not, I'm not coming at this from a religious point of view. Um, what, what I am saying is that you keep telling men to lower their standards because you were saying, wife up these whores. 3% of women, you know, 100 years ago, men got a virgin. They got a virgin four plus kids. Three percent of women are waiting till marriage nowadays. You're saying wife them up anyway. Doesn't matter the risk. Who cares? Do you have a question, Pearl? <laughs> so, yeah, my I'm going to go back to STD is not a deal breaker. Yes or no? No, they're not. A, if they're not okay. a deal breaker for men, they're okay. not a deal breaker for women. OK. On top of that, porn, not a deal breaker. Having been involved in pornography. Mm hmm. No, it's not a deal breaker, but it's something to be very concerned about. The same as if a man had been behind the camera doing OnlyFans work or working at OnlyFans. But if he's truly repented, then people can really change and we should give them mercy, whether they're a man or a woman. People can change, but it doesn't mean they statistically do. And women that have made those deci mm -hmm. decisions, statistically, the, the grass, statistically, it's not, it's not a happy ending for most of them. So that, that's the other question. Why would you sign up? Would you ever sign a business contract that someone's paid to leave? If, so me and you, me and you are going to do business and I get a bunch of money and your children if I leave, if you would sign that contract. <laughs> if you get my children, because mm -hmm, maybe yeah. we're pairing our YouTube channels together, yeah. probably not going to sell <laughs> off my kids on that. But it's very common in business deals, Pearl, where if you have a high value uh, part business partner and you really want them to be a part of the venture, you might include things like a buyout clause or severance pay. That's not that uncommon to ameliorate risks or to encourage them to take part in the project. Okay, so would you, you <laughs> would you sign the contract or no? Would I sign a contract? Mm -hmm. You've made it very- Where I'm paid to leave. Where you're paid to leave if you're my business partner. Mm -hmm. It depends how much and what risk. If you- it's if like, you, Why is it? Why can't you answer the question? Because your question is underdefined and it can't be answered. You've asked it in a very vague way. So I can only give a vague answer and reply. Okay, me and you sign a business deal. And in that business can't even deal- it, and I, go ahead. <laughs> and in that business deal, I get your whole YouTube channel if I leave- and I get your children. Are you signing it? No, I'm not. Exactly. That's okay. the point. No, you're not because signing you, because it. Because you have. And, and this is the thing. They because, act like okay. it's one off instances. Okay. And this is what the, this is what the academics tend to do. They'll say, here's a study funded by this organization or here's another study. And they want you to not believe mm -hmm. what's in front of your eyes. Men are not signing up for marriage today. And yeah. you can and you can you can say it's that marriage is a great deal for men, but men are naturally logical. They do what makes sense. A hundred years ago, men were still men. Same software. They married women in three months. There's a reason it's gone up to three years. I would give I would sign a contract oh, where point. if you have to undergo if you're undergoing significant risk and the whole point of things that if mm -hmm. a marriage divorces is that women undertake risks if they come and then they give up their careers and they stay home and raise children, for example, and they the do that. For, and, but it's already the wrong kind of woman if she has to give up her career to even be with you. A woman should naturally want to be with you and want to be family oriented and have kids on her mind, period. See, you're like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole with that kind of logic. Like you're finding somebody that's not built for the family life, that's chasing a career and forcing them into the family life. That won't work. The fact of the matter is a lot of Western women aren't built for family life today. They aren't raised for family life today. And that's okay. Not everybody should be a husband. Not everybody should be a wife. Not everybody should be a parent, man. It's okay to say that not everybody's built for that. But if you're going to argue why people should be the traditional trad cook lifestyle of get married and especially under the rules we have in the West today, you better come with much stronger logic and reasoning than they can repent if they truly believe in the gospel. That ain't good enough, bro. I'm not taking an OF pro, an ex-adult entertainer, some chick who was getting railed, pumped and dumped with 20 abortions. I'm good, bro. No, thank you.
women they, aren't doing that. And, the majority of women are not doing that statistically. Okay. Three out of four women are working. So okay. it's not the majority. The point is, if they go and do that and they They're take not. part in a marriage, they don't want you're to. going to be taking, you're undertaking mm -hmm. risks when you're involved in marriage. Well, as mm -hmm. I stated before, women are twice as likely to end up in poverty after divorce than men. Yeah, because women, women are bad with money. No, women, what happens women is are not, women, women usually have 80% of the usually, world's debt. Women have 80% of the world's debt. Women are not good with money. And many, as I men, showed and, in my and, opening and, statement, and many, and many, men have and the many, majority of and debt. Many, and many, that's not true. Women have 80, women have, women have 80 percent of the world's debt. And the other thing that that they don't take into account is that in this country, men have more. But and, go ahead. And 80, women have 80 percent of the world's debt. Women are not great with money, and men earn more as well too. And and the thing is, you don't. You're, and uh, when he says that men have the majority of the debt, has he taken into account, and there are studies that show this too, that women are the primary spenders in the marriage, that women are the ones spending the money the man earns anyway? So when he's accumulated this debt, is it under the whims of the wife and all the things she's wanted to acquire in their marriage? What kind of debt constitutes debt? Have these men gotten divorced and now have racked up debt from the divorce? Are they on the hook for all the things they bought, all those assets that they've lost, some that still need to get paid, are they on the hook for that? So if we really dive into the nitty gritty of all these statistics, I think what Pearl is saying is more than true. You're not addressing the suicide problem. Do you not think I, that's a problem? Uh, of course, suicide's a problem. It's more of a problem for men who never marry. I'm asking in divorce. They're nine times more likely to commit suicide after a divorce. They're nine times then, more and, likely and, than and a divorced veterans, woman. And, 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 you're you're and, misreading and, the statistic. And, 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 and in... That's still Family bad. Family court, when, if they find within what? five years, many men do commit suicide. What do you think? You think it's just made up? But, you think it's just fake? Everyone, no, all I these men, no, all I've these actually men read that are saying, studies. my life, my life is ruined. Yes, let, let, let him answer it. Go. Go ahead, go ahead. No, because I've actually read the studies. Okay. And the problem is you're doing the comparison fallacy here. You're just picking, hey, if you get married, this bad thing can happen to you or this bad thing can happen to you. And that's true. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to not get married... You can also have many bad things happen to you. You can grow up and have no social connections. You become a recluse and you're more likely to commit suicide. You're more likely just mm -hmm. to not take care of yourself. And the statistics show mm -hmm. that on average, ever married men, including divorced men, live longer, are healthier, and rate their lives as happier than never married men. Women, it's a statistical women, because fact. Women, because women date happy men. So they, women, women pick, women pick for these things. How like, do you know what that? Because I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman. I know what we pick for. We like tall, handsome, good-looking men. Is every married that's, man that's, tall, that's handsome, who, and good-looking? Not every, but he's usually one of those things. He's usually one. Like he, he's usually either successful or handsome or good. It's women don't marry homeless men off the street. There's a big difference between tall, <laughs> so, handsome, so, and successful so and I'm homeless. Saying, I, There's also average. No, and so my point is, women tend to pick above average men. We see this on dating apps. Women swipe right five percent of the time. The number one way people are meeting that's under thirty is on dating. That's yeah. because on dating so, apps, so, but three times it's out. About. I do. Not even out dating. Like, that's I do. Answer because on dating apps, Pearl. The reason that women are so choosy is because there are three to four times as many men on dating apps than women. Mm -hmm. So, no, she's got a point. Um, uh, women do choose men that are doing well in life, that have a good head on their shoulders, that mentally are stable, that have a lot of experience, and they tend to be happy. Like, who are the guys that are more susceptible? or most susceptible to ending things. It's guys that are not in that state of mind. And guys in that that are in that sorry state of mind don't have any women looking their way. Women want fun. Women want the feels. Women want to be around guys that exude positive energy. You think that guy is in that exact state of mind when he's thinking about ending it all? Like that dude that's ending it all is because he's got divorced and everything got taken away. And so he's, by this guy's studies, nine times more likely than the woman to end it all. Okay, great. That's still a bad statistic, bro. Doesn't matter. Now, when you compare it to the men that have nothing, is it because the men that have never had a marriage, probably never had a relationship, probably are really ugly, probably never been given a chance to even have a girlfriend, probably feel some kind of way about themselves that has stopped them from having relationships with people, may have mental health issues, may be recluses because of, you know, horrendous trauma. Who knows what it is? But if you dive into the statistics, even those single dudes were probably in such a bad state of mind and sorry mental shape that they would have never had a woman anyways. Shouldn't these men be cast aside as troubled? And then when we look at men that have normal lives, normal relationships, have had girlfriends, are getting laid, and compare them to the married men, now you take a normal, would you even call it a success, just a normal 
guy in the dating pool that has intimacy, that has sexual access versus a man that is married, what are the statistics they're bearing out between two healthy people? Because in order to even be married and have a woman, you have to be this guy first. That's single, successful, has access to women. It's these guys specifically that jump into the marriage pool. It's not the dudes that never had a shot at the bottom. So men will be constantly swiping right. Women can be more choosy in that environment because there's just so many more men. But in real life, when you look at a 1993 study, another one by Taylor and another one another one by Taylor Taylor yeah. done in before 2011. Media. I would like to finish before Taylor and Taylor study in 2011 shows that men and women, when they get married, they tend to be within the same social range mm -hmm. and attractiveness. So while for dating and hookups, you're correct, men, women on social media apps because there's so many men to pick from go for the higher quality the men. Man. When it comes for marriage, people tend to marry within their own social and attractiveness value bracket. Right, but that doesn't that doesn't disprove what I'm saying. What women pick a small percentage of men no, when given the choice. That's not yes. true because if I'm talking about swimming, marriage. If, if swimming, <laughs> yeah, We're but, talking about marriage, not Tinder. But, if women, but that's the number one way people are meeting under 30. And that's the thing, like a lot of you, a lot of you guys are so out of touch. You, you don't mm -hmm. see, like these studies take years to come out at some time. I can mm -hmm. tell you firsthand what's going on because I actually talk to the people. No, I agree. It's done to try and, to meet your spouse and, on Tinder. And, and, that's <laughs> right, but that's what's happening. Right. That, that's where the world is going. Right. And, and you're encouraging men to clean up women's mess. And, and I say men shouldn't have to do that. Right. Men shouldn't have to sign a contract where women are paid to leave. I, I think it's so simple. If right. people are paid to do the wrong thing, why wouldn't they do it? Why, why would, I'm not saying every woman will, but every woman can. What woman is going to want to say, Actually, gee, you know what would yeah. be great? Don't ask questions. Let her go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll go. Well, you can I'd, answer. Yeah, but don't I will ask answer. Uh, uh, no, the women are saying, gee, it would be so awesome if I married this guy and then got full custody of the kids. So now I'm a single parent and I have to take care of these kids. Good thing he sends me four hundred and forty dollars a month to help with that. That doesn't sound like a great deal to me. Four hundred and forty dollars over 18 years is over 100 K. That's life changing money. That is life changing. And this Pearl, is the thing. This is try this raising is the children. This on is this three is, kids this is, on this four hundred forty dollars. Yeah, but men aren't, or uh, women, excuse me, aren't thinking rational, logical in that thing. They're just trying to trap the guy because their emotions are high. How do I keep him? I love him. He's, what would you say? Straying away. He's looking at other women. He's cheating. He's blah. And some women think, quite a lot of women think a baby will solve all their problems. If I have this baby, we'll change. If I have this baby with him, all our problems will go away. Newsflash, it doesn't. Now you're stuck with a baby, you're a single mother, and you're getting child support off a dude. And we're not even talking about marriage. But women do this in marriages all the time, too. And they're incentivized to leave because in marriage, you get alimony plus child support plus assets a month. And this is the thing. This is the <laughs> other thing that you don't think about. Oh, this is the other thing. See, I'm not used to it. I always have to write it down. You, you said that men don't fight for custody. This is the problem with men in statistics. This is the problem mm -hmm. when people just read studies and they're not actually in the field. You don't know why. You don't know why men aren't fighting because a lot of times men are in the position they cannot afford to fight for custody and the lawyers will tell them not to do it because they spend 50,000. You know, I, I interviewed one guy, uh, $1.5 million in Texas, $1.5 million on a divorce. He still didn't get primary custody. These cases are common. And if you spend today in family court, if you actually were in the field, you would know. Okay, so that's, but, that's but an anecdote. The, and it also doesn't say anything about marriage because mm -hmm. if a man hooks up with a woman or cohabits and she gets pregnant, he can have the same issues. So this is not unique to marriage. Well, yeah, but marriage puts them at a higher risk because they're on the on the hook for alimony as well. Alimony that's, is that's, only paid out in eight percent of marriages. That's the, I, I know, but what what does a man get out of marriage that he doesn't get out of a live in girlfriend? What benefit? Well, he doesn't. Men, he, well, one benefit he's not a forty five year old guy saying, "Can I bring my girlfriend to the party?" Who cares? One, he's not that. <laughs> that's the best you can come up with. You couldn't argue a traditional conservative point of view of man and woman married under God, under the church, to have a healthy environment for the kids to be brought up in as God intended, married as a married man with a married woman. You could have said, I don't want to do this boyfriend, girlfriend out of wedlock. I don't believe out of wedlock. I am a man of God, man of the Bible. And in the Bible, it says we have to get married under God and raise our kids under those principles. Sim you couldn't even say that. I don't believe in cohabitating outside of marriage.
I don't believe in having kids outside of marriage. You don't want to be the 45-year-old guy that's like, can I bring my girlfriend? What the f***, bro? He's a mature, stable person. What what does he get out of it? He lives longer. He's healthier. No, 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 no. What benefit does he get out of specifically signing a contract? What does he get? What he women, gets, women give children outside of marriage, so that he doesn't get that. The woman, women gain weight get, after get, marriage; get, he doesn't you, get that. Get and all of the stats you're saying you're attributing to marriage, I would disagree. Well, I would. I, the woman gets stability from marriage. The man already gets everything if she's in a living girlfriend. The only one who gets something extra is the woman because the legal ramifications. I would, I would say that would women. I would say that women tend to marry happy, what, successful bro? men. That is that's that is just a correlative theory that you have. And that's Mm -hmm. not true, because if you just look around at men and when you do longitudinal studies Mm -hmm. that control for success, Mm -hmm. see, that's not the case. One longitudinal study found that after a man gets married and upon the birth of his first child, he works 10 to 20 hours a week more than unmarried men. Right, the reason they're love, more because successful. Because women love spending men's money. <laughs> of course he's got to work more. Or I mean, be, even car no, sales, because, even car because salesmen he, will tell you the final say is who? The woman. The no, it's wife. because now it's he's, grown, he's grown up, Pearl. He's grown up and he realizes <laughs> no, life says, isn't just about says, him. He has to take care of credit, other people. My wife's credit card spending is off the chain. And that's that's the thing. I, I am men in the field. Men have more credit card debt than women. I am in the field. Field. Credit card debt I am in the field. I you that's, what expertise, that's the thing. What field? That's, that's, what expertise that's the do you thing, have? Because in this? when you actually interview the men that have gone through this, you have a completely different perspective. Hmm. And that's the thing. Because you can make we just went through COVID. How many studies did they have? And and experts that came out and said, COVID, co- you know, you should take the shot. Oh, sorry, I don't want to YouTube you, but <laughs> you have one minute left. But my my entire point is you can make a study that says anything, but if you look at reality, Ex- if you look at reality, so studies look, are wrong except for the ones you if cite you at, for if your you look positions. At, if you look at if you look at reality, <laughs> yeah. uh, you would never sign a contract that someone is paid to leave, and the qual we there are just not enough wives to go around. You have forty seconds left. Feel free to ask him more questions. No, I think that's it. All right. <laughs> No problem. All right, we've got 20 minutes. Again, you're asking the questions, you're responding to them. All right. We'll try not to talk over each other just for the sake of those at home as best as we're able. Ready, set, go. All righty. It's kind of fun. It is fun. <laughs> You'll get addicted to it so after was, a while. I was a little nervous, but it's no, kind of fun. Then you get right into it and it's just fun, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Um, we brought up something earlier about men. Do you, do you think men and women have equal basic value, like equal dignity? What do you mean by dignity? They have the same intrinsic Actually, I'll save the this half of this episode for another one. We'll see the questions he brings as a part two, so we don't make this one too long. That was rough, dude. He couldn't come up with anything convincing. Dollar Store Michael knows is so out of touch with men's issues in modern dating culture. Dude cannot find criticism of women without bringing it back to men. He was painting marriage for a man as this awesome thing, citing statistics. As a Christian man, excuse me, I've seen the weakening of the Christian man. Also, I've seen the role of men belittle to the point of absurdity. I am not like this and have butted heads with Christian men about these topics. We are equal in value, not equal in purpose. My wife gains zero weight after the birth of our daughter and still is just as beautiful. I have standards and my wife knows it. We live in harmony with love because we know our roles. This dude has strayed away from reality slash the current dating market. We need realistic men with a backbone giving more advice and counter views to what this is. He speaks to itching ears, careful not to offend with actual truth. At the moment, this guy said, because men and women are equal and should be treated equally, he was cooked. That's the face of a simp. Wow. He is really weak. What happened to masculinity? Did he just compare watching adult entertainment to participating in adult entertainment? Wow. This one said, we'll end it on this one. This is the reason I left the church. These Christians ruin and fail men. I can't be the only one seeing this stuff. I've heard about men being discontent with the Christian church, especially Protestants in America. Eastern Orthodox here in Eastern Europe are holding strong. They're very much so into the good book and following its tenets. But it seems like America's brand of Christianity is some sort of woke monstrosity. It's a complete joke, to be honest. I don't know. For the religious crowd, I'm really interested in what your guys' thoughts on this topic is. We'll see you guys on the next one.